One of my co-workers went to a conference in Greece and came back with a present of something which is very old from 400 years BC or even earlier that I'd never seen before. It's called the Pythagoras Cup and it has this strange bit sticking up in the middle. And the story is that this cup was invented by Pythagoras, the one that worked on right angle triangles. He invented it so when he gave his students wine, they all got the same amount. And if somebody was greedy, that student got his comeuppance. It behaves normally until you get to this gold ring here, the one I'm running my finger around, not the one up here. And if you fill it above that, that's somewhere between these two, suddenly all the liquid in the glass drains out and through a hole in the bottom. Of course you can't see what's happening here, so I rushed off and bought a glass one so you can see what's happening. I asked Neil to demonstrate it. You pour in the water, imagine it's wine, but if it was wine you couldn't see inside, and as the level of the wine rises, Suddenly, if you're too greedy, it all dribbles out. And it siphons out through the little tube in the center. The way it works is that inside here there is a U-tube which has a small opening at the bottom and as the liquid rises the U-tube fills up and when it gets to the top it siphons round and sucks the water out. I was really excited about this and then when I was driving home I wondered what would happen if you filled it with mercury. Mercury is a very dense liquid. So I persuaded Neil to fill it with mercury and it works just as well with mercury. And what is interesting is that when you do it with water, the water on our glass Pythagoras cup dribbles out at a sort of angle because water so-called wets glass, it sticks to the glass. But with mercury, because it is denser and it doesn't wet glass, it goes straight down and makes quite a sort of spectacular pattern in the bottom of the dish. I then had a slightly strange idea. I wondered what would have happened if you put just a little mercury in and then filled the rest with water. And I predicted, because water is much less dense than mercury, that in fact you could fill the cup right to the top. So Neil obligingly tried it, even though he was meant to be going on holiday, and it works. You can fill the Pythagoras cup right to the top if you put a bit of mercury at the bottom. So what is happening is that the weight of the water is just not enough to force the mercury up inside the siphon. If you fill it completely with mercury, you have enough weight pushing down to make the siphon work. So the upshot is that if Pythagoras' students had been clever, they could have put some mercury in the bottom of the cup and filled it right to the top. The downside, of course, is that they would have poisoned themselves. There were quite nice crystals that you could see formed in the surface of the metal. And there was this great lump of mercury at the bottom, solid. But Neil had quite a lot of difficulty getting it out at the end and it began to melt and so on. But that wasn't part of the experiment.